Oh, okay, folks. I am actually very, very nervous. Uh, this is the first time that I'm going to try to walk the dog since the moose blockade, <laughs> which has now become infamous online since I made a video about it. But uh, I am terrified. Um, and I figure let's just film the whole thing and if something crazy happens, I'll just drop the gimbal, you know, <laughs> and deal with the situation as best I can. If it is a truly threatening thing that happens. But uh, the first question is, will the moose, plural, since it's the same word as a singular and a plural construct, will the moose allow us to walk? Uh, you see, I've been making some progress on the shoveling, but uh, thankfully so far this snow has been a no snow as opposed to no show. And I'm not too worried about that. I'm actually very happy. If this one was as bad as the first one, it would be very terrible. Whoa, there's ice under the snow, so you have to be extremely careful. In fact, there are these really cool, I don't know. We're not going to let her off the leash today at all, because I'll tell you, what happened with that moose last night is one of the scariest things ever, because she was just off the leash, and she was confronting them. She was, like, basically four feet away, kept barking at them, and they were standing their ground. They were not going to leave. They said, no, we, we deserve to be here. And I was so terrified that there was going to be a fatality or an incident, because here's a mother with her baby. And the mother is right next to the baby, protecting the baby. And then we got this girly here. And she's just thinking she's got the greatest thing ever, which is to bark at these creatures and threaten them. Because she really enjoys this type of aggressive behavior. It's just the way that her breed is. They call it high drive. There's three drive levels you can breed dogs for, and she's definitely like a four. <laughs> Maybe a five, which is probably why she was left in the mountains and I rescued her. That's one of my guesses is that she was a little bit too hot to handle. So somebody said, well, see, this is where the stuff starts to happen. This is, this is right where the blockade was. And I am checking around for moose because we do not want to find one. I mean, if we do, okay, it's gonna make for great television. And I get all that and you'll probably be very excited by the drama that unfolds in the ensuing rampage of madness. Beast against beast, tooth and claw fighting for survival in the wildness. High 8,600 8, altitude survival environment, the theater of operations. I'm scared. I mean, these moose are aggressive. They're organizing as a team. They're pulling together their resources. They're saving on gas by carpooling. It's very, very upsetting. I think that the moose have, uh, you know, certainly tried to find their power position and assert a claim of title over this property. Well, we're not gonna let that happen. You know, we can't be overthrown. Gurley and I have to bravely continue to do this walk, regardless of the dangers involved. I do believe it's actually a family of five moose because I've seen them all. There's the father who I affectionately call a grand piano on four dumb legs. But you gotta tilt the grand piano sideways. But you don't want those four dumb legs starting to run towards you, because it's a big problem. And yes, in your comments, you're telling me about moose attacks. Let me just keep a good look on everything here. I am a little bit nervous, I gotta admit. This is like, they're creating some sort of hundredth moose effect where there's a hive moose mind. And as they integrate with each other's consciousness, 
they begin exploring the boundaries of how to psychoanalyze the enemy, find his weaknesses, strike at his heart, expose his vulnerability. Because a moose is a very cunning creature. It wants destruction, it wants death. It will protect its lo loved ones above and beyond anything you can imagine. There's so many videos that prove this. This is a titanic adversary and I am just in a constant state of terror as I take this walk. I mean, he could be over there. There's a grand piano on four dumb legs. And if I call out to him, he'll probably go away. So that's kind of a good idea. That guy, I mean, the, the father, holy Jesus, is he big. I've, you've seen the mother, you really know. There's no way you're getting off this leash. She loves to run down this hill and she has chased them. So here's what I got. I got a father who's huge. That's the grand piano. They're kind of like cue sticks for a pool table. They're really dumb, long, stupid legs. And this guy is like 10 feet tall. Oh, just making me think about it is, oh God, he's got a huge rack of horns. He is big. I mean, he's just huge. He does his body. Looks like you took some kind of, I don't know, Steinway Grand. Tilted it sideways, probably add even more weight than the piano was in the first place, which is, you know, a lot. Then you put that thing on four towers of full motility that have enough stupidity to run at a human being with a lethal dog. That's why you say that it's got four dumb legs. And I'm not happy about it at all. The piano could be over there. I mean, who could ever have any peace at all on this hike? I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a drama. And I'm in pain because I'm gonna go around this corner and here's the moose. And that grand piano might be playing, not Bach or Beethoven, but like, geez. Stravinsky, you know, the right of moose. Yeah, girly, I know all about it. I know all about the four dumb legs. Can we please go? Because I'm getting more and more upset and nervous. As we pop the ridge here, let's keep her closer up. Because if the moose is waiting in the cave and he's decided that now is his chance that we're vulnerable, we're weak, now is his chance to strike. The four dumb legs will trample you. They will pound a new cavity into your chest, which is irreversible. And you get to wear that for the rest of your life, which is about 10 seconds. And your last breath is an agonized breath because your lungs have pooled with blood. And uh, you go, four dumb legs <gasps> and then you die right there that's what it is that's death by four dumb legs look i'm not doing it all right i'm not doing the death by the four dumb legs oh yeah i did carve through the uh this is very oh god it's getting worse and worse now because they live down there there's a road down there which we have very well rigged with security cameras and other stuff. Doesn't matter if you got four dumb legs. Security doesn't mean anything. And we're not gonna bother them in their natural habitat at all. But, uh, okay, we're clear over here. No moose, no moose. So I think we're good. I think the moose decided that my gifts of a very generous half jar of peanuts. Oh, this is beautiful, huh? A ger very generous half jar of peanuts and apples and whatever things I had on, on hand that seemed appropriate. 
Okay, girly, I don't want to meet any more legs than yours. Let's get this going. That's far enough. Leave me. If you only knew what four dumb legs can do. I've seen the dad. He's got a big old rack of moose horns that are so much bone density. It probably rivals that of the star child skull from Lloyd Pye, which apparently has an enamel density comparable to that of human teeth, but it's the whole skull. Well, I don't know how hard those dumb horns are, but I don't want to find out. And I don't want this video to be the day that I find out. And it's pried out of my blue hands after Girlie has been slowly feasting on me for her nourishment since she's unable to let herself back into the house. And uh, that's okay. You know, if I'm carrying, I could be carrying something else too. You don't know what I'm doing. That's a pun. That's my A-level material. I hope you don't steal that, okay? That's trademarked and copywritten. David Miss Wilcock. If I wanted to identify as a non-cis person, apparently is what they call it, then I would be Miss Wilcock. The cis miss. I'm cis Miss Wilcock. I love it. Okay. Different than hot chocolate, which I certainly think I could use after this terrifying ordeal. I am in constant fight or flight. Oh, there goes the dog. See, you know something's wrong. There's definitely danger in these woods. You guys are telling me there's a damn Sasquatch out here. You guys are telling me he opens the door. I mean, I don't know if I should be reading my comments anymore because I'm starting to get a little, frankly, a little hangry. If I haven't eaten and then I go to YouTube and I read my comments, then my lack of protein affects the neurochemistry of my brain, which leads me to think that I give a crap about what you think about me. And I actually really don't. That's the gift of freedom that Sasquatch has given me because, oh, he's come in, you know? I've let him in. And we've shared sacrament. Some of it was, you know, consumable in nature. You know, the Sasquatch, uh, he's your friend, okay? He's not trying to hurt anybody. We talked it all out. I'm a little bit nervous about revealing too much information because I think I think when I get a security clearance, I'm not going to be allowed to talk about that part. So why don't I just preemptively censor myself about what it's like to do some burning with a Sasquatch and how many... His lung capacity is quite amazing, I will say that much. But uh, after a while, you just think you're hanging out with a regular person. It's, he, he does carry. I mean, he's got his own. So anyway, that's enough of that. He can be your friend too. You know, I just wanna, Sasquatch can be invited in anyone's heart. Maybe he'll help you through a hard time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh at myself. That's, I broke, I broke the protocol. <laughs> Now, will you please, uh, here we go, okay. I wanted you to see my tree again. I'm all out of breath, that's your fault. Thanks a lot, okay. Okay, Gimbal, now I want this, so can you figure that out? Okay, good. So far, there is no skunk ape. There's no hybrid ape. There is no... Ape envy, nothing of the sort. All I find is peace and meditation and terif terrifying spectacle of coming face to face with a very dumb grand piano on four dumb legs this morning. And it's not like they're on wheels either. I mean, these legs freaking run. And I don't really know what kind of miles per hour 
they can generate, but there's probably some dork who knows it in the comments because he went to college or whatever. And that's cool. So tell me how fast the skunk moose can run. I'd love to know because I find him to be incredibly terrifying and I want to have a full threat profiling of my enemy because as I approach my house, they could very well be garrisoned under the porch. They may have arms, uh, munitions. I mean, you know, we know they don't have arms. Come on, I'm not stupid. Look, why do you have to make a big deal about it? Can we please get back to the video? Yeah, I know. Okay, look, what I meant to say was that their arms are, Never mind. Okay, look, look, look. Can we, okay, let's just do this. All right, girl, are you okay? Bush, bush? Yeah, she's good. I am so freaking scared. You pe Whew. Because they're around. You don't know where they are. They could literally be underneath the snow. If it's a moose ninja. So you know, look at right here. Okay. This is incredibly upsetting, folks. These are probably moose tracks because I don't go that way and I didn't. And so like, this is a very, very active threat profile. Roger, roger, 10-9 that, zero in on the 507. We got 10 moose on the left side of 40195, six or five, seven, 509. There are approximately 15 moose spirits acting as if they were intermediaries, bringing about synchronicity through a totemic infusion of information, knowledge, and protocol related to the ever-diminishing power of the cabal as they are blocked by the truckers. Amen, hallelujah, moose, but not moose lodge. Okay, that was just a little moose blessing to clear the air and the Oh God, he's probably right behind those trees over there. And it's, it's crazy, I'm not, huh. what are we gonna do? I mean, if this is the end of my life, I think I've had a pretty good run. It's sort of like when you get in that elevator and then it does the weird stuff and the lights go and it starts like buckling. And the lady next door to you like pukes into your jacket when she really should have puked into her jacket first. And I said to her like, you know, could you please be a little more discreet? I'm about to die in an elevator and I, I don't really appreciate you vomiting on me right now because I've had so much trauma that I don't really feel fear. So I'm just kind of grossed out that you're like puking on me as I'm about to die in this elevator because I want to have a clean death, you know? I, I want the coroner, there you go, girl. I want the coroner to find my body like, you know, the pubes have got to be good. I got to shave them up. It's got to look good. I mean, so what you've done is you've created like a code 50194 to five or sixer. And that specifically refers to elevator death covered in vomit by the woman with the pink umbrella who was standing next to you and then was kneeling as actually most of it went into your shoes. And that's just how we live in corporate America on a typical day when you're trying to take an elevator and you check the inspection certificate, at least in Los Angeles, and they're almost never cleared for inspection. They're always expired. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to have a freaking elevator that's expired and you actually dare to ride in it? I'll tell you what, there might be a real peachy surprise for you next time you do it, my friend.